Hi, my name is Miss Joy, and I'm here to talk to you about forests. Forests are very important ecosystems. A forest ecosystem is an area with a lot of trees that create a full canopy, and that means very little light gets down to the forest floor. Here in Western Michigan, we have a temperate deciduous forest. That means that it's made up of deciduous trees like maples and ash trees and beech trees. And then we also have coniferous trees like white pine, which is our state tree, hemlocks, spruces. So those two tree um, types mix together to make our temperate deciduous forest. So a forest ecosystem differs from other ecosystems like meadows um, or ponds because there's a lot of shade, right? These trees have grown up very, very tall over many years, but there's not a lot of sunlight that reaches the ground. And of course, our plants need sunlight to grow. So you're gonna notice some differences between like a meadow and a forest. In a meadow, you're gonna have big flowers in the summertime, but in a forest, what the flowers are gonna do is they're gonna take advantage of spring before our deciduous trees have leafed out and those flowers are going to flower really early so they're going to do it in like March or April and they're going to put all their energy into those flowers early in the season and then they're going to be done for the rest of the year so they're going to use as much sunlight as they can early in the season and then also in forests there's a lot of protection from the elements so there's less wind in the forest and there's um, a lot less snow or rain in the forest because it's protected from all of these big large trees that help that but there's not as much nutrients in a lot of the soil because these trees take a lot of the nutrients up one nice thing about a forest is as you get the leaves falling year after year you're going to get a duff layer on the forest and that duff layer provides a lot of nutrients for plants and animals but every once in a while you need a natural fire to occur in a forest and that fire will get rid of some of that duff restore the nutrients to the ground so it's even more rich and then the cycle starts over again so forests in their own are amazingly unique our forest has five different zones there's the tree stratum zone which is trees that are large like uh, the maples behind me and they reach about 60 to 100 feet in the sky the next zone is the sapling young tree zone so those are the trees that are still trying to grow up underneath all the shade but they're not quite adults yet then the next zone is our shrub zone and that's things like um, viburnums and witch hazels service berries those are kind of your shorter shorter trees that we have then next is the herb zone or the herbaceous zone. That's the plants that are gonna be on the bottom. So that's like your wildflowers, like your trillium or your ramps. And finally, the last one is the ground zone. So that has all the detrius and like lichens and moss that are down on the ground. So like any ecosystem, we have producers, consumers, and decomposers. So if you think of your producers, that is gonna be something like all of our plants that we have here. So these plants are using photosynthesis to make energy and they need the sun, they need um, air, they need water and the nutrients from the soil. So we have producers all the way up from the trees, all the way down to the wildflowers and different plants that grow on the ground. Then we have our decomposers. Those are really important in a forest because if we didn't have decomposers, we'd have leaves like way higher than me. But um, any animal like little pill bugs or roly polies or sow bugs, they're decomposers, worms, lots of macro and micro invertebrates that live in the soil and in the leaves are gonna break down those leaves for us and also break down any dead animals they find. So decomposers are getting rid of dead things. They're using it for their bodies for energy and then they really add a lot of nutrients to the soil. And then we have our consumers, and those are pretty much every other animal that you can think of. Um, so you can think of a bobcat might live in a forest. They are specifically only carnivores, and they're gonna eat all sorts of other animals. So any kinds of mammals and birds, and any kinds of snakes, reptiles they can find, that they're gonna eat those. And we also have a lot of omnivores that are consumers. So a bear would be a very large omnivore. A possum would be an omnivore you could find in the forest. And they're going to eat things like other animals, 
They might also eat dead animals and then they might eat some berries or nuts that they find in the forest. And then we have some herbivores. So um, rabbits and also deer can live in the forest and they're gonna eat a lot of the plants. So our, cons our producers, they're gonna eat those producers. And all together, those animals and plants combined make a very complicated ecosystem. So the forest provides a ton of animal homes for different animal species. So you can go into a forest and roll over logs and you might find salamanders living under those logs. So even the logs on the ground, you have to roll them over slowly and carefully. There might be salamanders or worms living under there. And of course trees, trees are amazing, right? Everybody loves trees. So trees provide great habitat for birds. They build their nests. Some build up high, some build all the way down low. Right? Also squirrels love to live in trees, tree frogs love to live in trees. Think about how much um, protection a tree provides. You can be up high away from ground predators, you can be sheltered from any rain or snow or wind, and you can also live in a tree cavity. That's one of the best things. So um, skunks and raccoons will often find a tree cavity inside even a dead tree. So trees that are dead are still really beneficial to the forest because they can provide homes for animals and they usually have a lot of bugs in them. So woodpeckers and bears will like to dig up those trees and get to those insects too. So being in the forest, there's a lot of places that you can find really good places to raise your young or shelter from weather. And the forest provides lots of food for animals. So a lot of trees will produce um, seeds or nuts that animals love to eat. There's lots of berries that are produced in the woods and then also lots of yummy green leaves to be able to be eaten. So the forest pro provides good shelter and it provides good food for animals and it provides enough space. There's plenty of space in the forest um, and that's what animals need to survive. rolling over that log we found something really exciting. We found a red-backed salamander but a blue phase of it. And I'm gonna hold them closer to the camera in a second for you to see them. But these salamanders are pretty amazing because they don't have any lungs and they lay their eggs on land. But they are probably the most common animal species in any deciduous forest in the eastern United States. So there's just tons of them. People don't notice them because they're little and they like to live under logs. So here's a close-up of him. He's missing an eye, which is pretty cool. He's got all his legs and his tail. He can regenerate those if he loses them, but that eye, he's not gonna be able to grow back. So this salamander is in the amphibian family. He's an adult. He's gonna lay some eggs under a log, and then those babies are gonna grow up, and they are also gonna live under logs. These types of salamanders never go back to um, the pond to live. They always live under leaves or logs in the forest. They don't need water to reproduce, but they need to stay moist. So that's why they live under leaves and logs. Very cool.